I'm Mark and Joey here, and Joey, it's a Tuesday night. That means the NFL for us and some great action. Uh, however, we want to first start off and talk about the website, um, ultimatesportschannel.com. Uh, we encourage you to go to the website. Uh, we got 50 uh, stories every day on, on the sports that are happening from uh, the night before. We also have uh, great offers from our sponsors, lots of things to do and see there. So uh, we encourage you to go over there. Also, Joey, um, you know, we've done a lot of wagering shows, uh, you know, in the overtime, but it takes a lot of time for us to actually put those on and, you know, find winners and all that kind of stuff, which we don't have. So what we did is we've gone and done our, our wagering strategies on every sport, but we're talking about NFL tonight, uh, and they are on demand through Vimeo.com. So how do you get to those if you want to go buy those? They are $29.95. That's a strategy that we use all the time. You'll be able to use it for all your wagering. Yeah, you do need to create an account on Vimeo, uh, but you go to v Vimeo On Demand, and, and this is where a lot of people sell products uh, and videos and, and stuff that's very useful to people. Uh, so we have our betting strategies on there. You can go on there and purchase it and uh, you know uh, get it back uh, by just simply using the strategies that we've come up with that have been very successful for us. Yeah, and so there's no cost for an account, right? No. To sign up, so that's easy to do. And, uh, and then go and look at those Video On Demand uh, through Ultimate Sports Channel. Uh, so you can search for us if you haven't used Vimeo before. You can search for us there. When you get to the search tab, click on the channel and then put our name in uh, because there's a whole bunch of ultimate something on Vimeo. We're just searching for the individual names of our videos. So when you go to the search area, look for search channel. We'll come up. Tons and tons of videos there, over 300. And uh, you can go for those videos on demand, see all our spending strategies. We actually have these strategies on every sport. Not just football, but we're mentioning football because of tonight. Uh, we do have basketball. We do have baseball. We've got uh, horse racing. And um, and I'm forgetting one. I forget what one. Uh, uh, baseball. Oh, NHL. Sorry. NHL. NHL. So, yeah. We got it all, guys. So that's all you really need to know. We got it all. Uh, as we do, obviously, our sports shows as well. We do a uh, show on every sport every week. We also do a betting strategy in every sport. So yeah. uh, whatever your favorite sport is, maybe right now the times is, is hockey and basketball going forward. Football is coming near an end. And then playoffs, our strategy isn't always about the playoffs. It's yeah. really about the regular season. So hockey and basketball right now is the timely sport. But if you're a baseball fan and are you already looking forward to your team and, and how they may or may not do and thinking about if they want to bet them this season, uh, you can go get the MLB one as well, which is uh, very powerful stuff. So uh, it works out great. And, uh, yeah, check those out. Yeah, so we'll look forward to that if you're interested. Uh, Joy, by the way, we're both dressed like it's winter. Uh, we're dressed here Tuesday night in morning, actually. We've had, we're in Myrtle Beach, for those of you who uh, haven't watched the show before or in a while, and we're out of Toronto, Canada. That's where we spend our summers. Uh, we head down Myrtle Beach for your golf. Um, a lot of people know that you're a professional golfer. Heading to Florida here at the end of the month, which will be great. Get to some real warm weather. We actually went to Tampa Bay to do a tournament was like 75 each day. But we're going to 40 degrees as the high tomorrow. So we got the winter clothes on. We're not very happy. It's going to be 20 some odd degrees overnight here in Myrtle Beach. It's unbelievable. Anyway, that's why we're dressed. We're kind of in mourning for the next three days of weather. And uh, let's get to it, Joe. Let's get to the show. I want to talk about a couple things here. Uh, this first story just drives me crazy. I'll let you comment on it first. But um, the Falcons, uh, in, in fact, uh, quarterback Ryan there says they're doing everything they can to save uh, the coach Quinn's job and I'm like well, why didn't you do that early in the season and make the playoffs yeah I think the comment probably came out of more of the situation which is he's going to be do you think he should be fired or is he going to be fired and it's kind of a way of saying they don't want him fired without saying that I think obviously I think they're trying to win the whole season um, but it just kind of I think sometimes with athletes it's just misinterpreted as now they're trying to save his job I just think his point was is that they're still trying to play and win games instead of tanky, which is really where the question came from, to save Dan Quinn's job, because obviously they want him to stay in Atlanta. Yeah. It seems stupid to me to make that kind of comment, because why weren't you winning earlier in the season? If you really wanted to save his job, maybe the playoffs would have done that. Now you're winning a few games at the end of the season. I think it's just showing the fight that the whatever. team still has, and part of it is without Matt Ryan specifically saying, I want Dan Quinn to stay, he says it through that way, because it looked bad if he wanted Dan Quinn to stay. Ownership does not want him to stay, and they keep him because of a quarterback. So yeah. it's his way of saying that, I think, more than anything else, and I think it just comes from a question that stems, why aren't you tanking once you start out bad? And he's kind of saying, well, we're excited to keep on winning. Instead of going full tank once we start off rough, because they want to save his job. Well, here's what you should be worrying about, is saving Ryan's job. <laughs> uh, he, he has no worries. Because Matt Ryan, I don't know, it's time for him to leave, I think. One run to the Super Bowl, but they've been horrible ever since. 
Yeah, I mean, Matt Ryan, he, he doesn't care. He'll go to a team if they want to get rid of him. I mean, there's hundreds of, well, every team, there's only three, two, but every team out there would take him in a heartbeat. Right. And, um, you know, he's somewhere that could fit in so many great places. Um, so if he does leave, you know, he's not certainly worried about his job and not being in the NFL again. He'll be signed in a matter of seconds if the Atlanta wants to trade him or releases him or if he become, when he becomes a free agent, which I don't think is for a little while because of his contract. So, you know, he doesn't need to worry about his job because we've seen the quarterback situation amongst the NFL. Yeah. There's a lot of teams that are very, very close that would love to have him right now, and uh, I'm sure uh, he's not worried about that. But, you know, I, I think it's just more along the lines, like I said, it's that time of year where sometimes you say stuff that sounds stupid kind of when you want to analyze yeah. it, but at the time I think it was simply to defend why they didn't tank. Yeah, I think you're right. I just thought it was the like, dumbest thing it you is could say. Weird, obviously. <laughs> it's just bad time. Well, let's talk about Matt Patricia when we want to talk about futures here a little bit and coaching. Um, he's got to be in real trouble. I mean, that, this team was put together, uh, you know, had one of the best young quarterbacks. They've, they've gone along and not been successful. Uh, started out reasonably well this year, but have retracted right back to what they've been in past. Well, he didn't get Matt Stafford completely young. I mean, Matt Stafford's already in his 30s, so Matt Patricia's only been there for two years. So, um, honestly, I don't mind the job Matt Patricia's done. He's had a great defense, which is what he was in New England. He was a defensive right. coordinator. Right. So, he's come over and built a defense. Now, the offensive side of the ball starts with the fact that their quarterback has a monster contract and isn't even playing right now. So right. I wouldn't fire him yet. I'd somehow give him some room, which would be uh, a, a go-ahead to get rid of Stafford some way, some, somehow. Well, that ridiculous contract they signed, who knows if they can. That's what I mean. But that's that's Matt Patricia's problem. It has nothing to do with his coach. He's built the defense, and he's a defensive guy. So right. you can't argue his coaching. On offensive ball, they can't put up points, but also no money to spend. So... You know, it's one of those tough situations for a coach like that. Stafford's contract, I don't know how many years it has left, but it is what is the Achilles heel of this team right now. And, and I wouldn't fire him. I really wouldn't. I would, I'd give him permission to maybe get rid of some high-paid players now on that team, rebuild the offense side of the ball. They should get a decent pick with only three wins this season. Yeah. And all these other teams winning now all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, you know, they might end up being the bottom. <laughs> they, yeah, I mean, they can get a decent quarterback. I think there's at least five, six quarterbacks in this draft. That I know people are excited about probably some receivers and running backs too, but I don't even think that's the issue. I think offensive line and quarterbacks are issue because offensive lines allow their quarterback to get beat up, and that's why Stafford's hurt again. But I wouldn't blame some Patricia. I'd actually give him more time and say, go ahead, get rid of Stafford, open up room for you to build this offense. So we've been talking a little bit in the last couple of weeks about Brady's almost a foregone conclusion. Does uh, does a Stafford go to New England? No, they don't have a starter, really. No, if Brady leaves New England, they're going to go with the rookie they got now. I mean, I think Belichick's never been one to pay a lot of money. I don't think he'd want to bring that guy, uh, someone like Matthew Stafford over who's injury prone. Someone like Matt Ryan, maybe, because at least Matt Ryan kind of stays healthy. But Belichick's not that guy. He doesn't need to bring someone in like that. He's built a great defense right now. Uh, he can build a young offense. He has a young quarterback that he likes already. That's why he got rid of Brian Hoyer, which was another thing against Brady, because right. Brady won Hoyer. Uh, back there because Brady's job, he doesn't want that to be threatened. So uh, I don't see I don't see uh, Belichick bringing an old quarterback. I think he's going to go younger if Brady does leave, and they already got the guy I think they like uh, based off uh, training camp uh, preseason and keep him around instead of Brian Hoyer, which was obviously uh, cheaper, but also an older man that Brady knew was pretty safe to yeah, stay there. Yeah. So I think uh, if New England does lose Tom Brady, they'll just go with the young guy they got there. What do you think about where Stafford might go? Well, Stafford right now has not many options. First of yeah. all, I don't think he'll go anywhere because I don't think Detroit can unload the contract without releasing him, which he still gets his money, unfortunately, for Detroit. Well, um, they could always trade him and pay part of the contract, too. They could do that, too. So you if know. you're going to trade him and pay part of the contract, I mean, there's there's a lot of teams that could use it right now. Um, you know, I just think, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, I think it's smart based on coaches right now is there's no need to go get an older quarterback right, right now. That kind Younger of money. quarterbacks are playing really well. So if you're a team that you feel like all you're missing is a quarterback, to go get a veteran actually makes zero sense right now. It worked with someone like Ryan Tannehill, but he's still younger than Stafford. Well, plus and, they, he was kind of let go. Like well, and he was cheap. He was, he, they yeah. got him for $3 million. Exactly. But if you're someone who wants a quarterback, you could go at Matthew Stafford, but he could get injured. You're going to pay a lot of money. And honestly, he hasn't been clutching the playoffs either. So you might as well get someone great in the draft right now. Try a backup or something. I don't see many options for Matthew Stafford. I'd say Matt Ryan has more options. Uh, Matthew Stafford, unfortunately, I think is... Well, he's is really not performing. At the end of a I mean, road. They haven't made much of the playoffs. When they have, they haven't won. 
I think, uh, you know, he doesn't have the kind of career. Matt Ryan did take the Falcons to the Super Bowl, even yeah. though the biggest embarrassment ever. The only thing, I think he got him there. Pittsburgh's a, a suitor for a quarterback in the offseason, yeah. depending on Big Ben. But I think they would like to bring someone in. Their young guys aren't doing it. I mean, they're winning games only because of their defense yeah. again. And our team has done that. That's good. But they're going to be looking for a quarterback. That may be like a team off the top of my head is probably Pittsburgh more than anybody else. Maybe the Colts. Uh, who looked ready to go and yeah. looked okay with percent and then have fallen off as we expected. Yeah. So maybe the Colts, maybe Pittsburgh. Those are a couple teams that first of all can afford it because the Colts got rid of Andrew Luck's contract. Right. They could bring in uh, Matt Stafford or Matt Ryan, uh, and so could Pittsburgh. So those are the type of teams you would look for, but they're still having success with younger quarterbacks. So if I'm Pittsburgh, do I not just let them hang around right. and learn from Big Ben and see if they can get better? Well, I think uh, you're right on the Pittsburgh side. I think the Colts is an interesting story. Colts because very interesting. They had built a team to be a Super Bowl team under Andy right now. Luck. Yeah. So even though they've had some good play this year, they have not achieved what they were looking to do. You know, put a Matt Ryan in there or put a Stafford in there, you might have a Super Bowl People team. People tell Matt Ryan and Matt bit. Stafford just like Andrew Luck. So yeah. if you thought it was a Super Bowl team with Andrew Luck, if you brought one of these guys in, um, I think it'd be very effective. I think Matthew Stafford's more likely than Matt Ryan right now. Yeah. Um, and I think that'd be a very interesting uh, play for sure. Yeah, I think you're right. I hadn't thought really of the Colts, but because you thought of how well they did early on without luck, but they really didn't finish it off. Colts, another so. team I'd say might look for a quarterback. That's where the rumors of Brady comes from, would be the Chargers. Yeah. But, um, you know, they're another team too that's going after Newton, Tom Brady. They definitely feel ready. They've lost a lot of close games this year in arguments right. because. Uh, Phil Rivers keeps throwing to the wrong team. Oh so. my god, yeah, it was, it's a bit embarrassing. So, teams like that, it's not a huge market, but there are like two or three openings. Other ones will go for younger, yeah. but those are teams I know in their minds think they should have been there already. And the Chargers have lost tons of close games. Uh, Indianapolis lost tons of close games, so they're probably thinking back home when they get in the room with GMs and stuff. That's a quarterback. I think I think it's a good pick for Indianapolis. Hey, let's let's move to the stupid. Um, Josh Gordon suspended again. Um, we don't have to say much. You can just go to what Stephen A. Smith ranted on about. And he's absolutely right on these guys. For $13 million, you can't stop smoking for the season. Like, come on. Yeah, and I on? get it. You know, he has an addiction, obviously. And addiction is serious and, and definitely with other substances, not yeah. weed these days. Um, but, again, it comes down to what Stephen A. Smith says. You can't stay off the weed for $13 million. Yeah. He doesn't, you know, I like Stephen A. Smith for many reasons. One of them was he calls people on his on their stuff. I yeah, mean, he, yeah. I was going to say on their shit, but he calls yeah, them yeah. on their stuff. You know, he doesn't care that, obviously, yes, it's an addiction. That's sad. But you have the money to bring someone in to guard you every single day if you want to. Yeah, yeah. But more important, you just don't have enough will to not do it for $13 million. Most people that have addictions don't have other things going on in their lives. That's why the addiction continues. I don't want to get into it because I don't know much about addiction, but Stephen A. Smith is... Always out there saying, yeah, stay like, off the weed. Yeah. Uh, how hard could it be for $13 million to provide you and your family a great life and he can't do it? Um, it's too bad. And by the way, they can do it in the off season. So I mean, that's what I mean. It's like six months. It's not even like your whole year. It's like six, seven yeah, months. Yeah. So so it's unfortunate yeah. that the addiction can take over $13 million. It's hard to believe. None of us know that, but we're not addicted either. So it's, it's hard to, to figure out exactly what happens there. But there's a bad one for him. I, I have a feeling it was the boredom in Seattle since Russell Wilson refused to throw to him. Uh, that got him uh, back to that probably his insecurity. So uh, certainly Seattle did him no favors by not pl- virtually not playing him. I don't even know why they signed him, but uh, I know Tom Brady would have liked to have had him back and somehow had someone guarding him to make sure he didn't have this problem for the rest of the season because he's got nobody to throw to. So anyway, just uh, one of those stupid things that is hard to believe again. Hey, listen, let's go from stupid to great. Drew Brees setting a new TD record. Um, you know, what can you say? These guys have got to play a long time to do this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, he passed a, a, another great quarterback on his way to the top. So uh, congratulations to him. It was great to see. Uh, however, the interesting funny part was a tweet that Tom Brady sent out. Um, and people were getting ridiculously upset about it. Well, he just said, you know, uh, it's going to be a tough record to beat, but it's worth trying with a winky face because yeah. all, all he really needs is like two touchdowns on yeah. Saturday to break yeah. it. Also, I want to say, you know, there was a debate on the internet about like, is it the same record as... Uh, if Tom Brady, you got to remember, Peyton Manning and Andrew Brees both played in a dome for a majority of the career. Tom Brady has played outside in the most horrific yeah, weather yeah. I've ever seen out there in New England, especially come this time of year. So, you know, there, that was another conversation. I thought that was even more intriguing. I would say Brady's more impressive having You're to right. play in that weather in New England quite often, uh, where Peyton Manning and mostly Drew Brees got to play in the dome yeah. in perfect conditions. And Drew Brees has always had a juggernaut offense. His division is Carolina. Tampa Bay, Atlanta, which is a dome, and his place is a dome. 
So those four climates are very good for quarterbacks. So while I love Drew Brees, I think he's a great quarterback. One of the small ones that really helped small quarterbacks today be in the league uh, and has been very impressive, been able to put up a certain amount of points and brought a lot to the city of New Orleans, especially when they had the horrific for Kirk and it was the one Super Bowl they had. So it's not to put him down as a person, as a player. It's just saying when you look at the record, if Brady does break the record, in my mind it's more impressive with the climates he has to play in Buffalo, New York, yeah. New England, and then Miami, which actually sucks in, uh, are the climates he has to play in versus Drew Brees that gets Tampa, Carolina, a dome in Atlanta, a dome at home, which, by the way, if you don't know, that's half his regular season games. So, yeah. um, if not more. And, uh, the, and other than the last couple of years where they've had great running back, he really threw the ball. Like an he used to throw, amount of he used throw the ball 45, 50 times yeah. a game. Like, yeah. So it was a certain amount of times through the ball. He's had good receivers. And Peyton was the same thing. Yeah, Peyton Manning you know, was all about throwing the ball. But Brady's been a more balanced quarterback typically over his career. So his touchdown record is more impressive. That's because he's played more playoff games. He's played more games overall. Uh, he stayed healthier than both of them. Although Drew Brees has been pretty healthy. Say, yeah, he hasn't been out much. Uh, Even Peyton, until the broken neck, was not out much. So I think yeah. they've all had great careers that way. All great careers, you but know? honestly, if Brady breaks, I think that's more uh, impressive. And he should break it, and hopefully he does. Uh, but also Brady is three years older too, and if Brees can play as long as Brady yeah. in that dome with New Orleans with that juggernaut offense, he, Brady, uh, Brees will end up probably with the record, I'd imagine. Yeah, you would think so. But you know what? People are too serious in life, eh? Brady's just having some fun. Brady's you know, really funny. Oh, don't make it about you and all this stuff. His 40-yard dash thing was even better because he said 40-yard yeah. dash between him and Lamar, but Lamar's wearing roller skates on grass. Yeah, yeah. So He has a good sense of humor. He does. Amazingly, has become quite the... Uh, the internet guy, the tweet uh, guy, which he hadn't done for years. So you can see these guys as they get older get to have more fun in the game, and he's doing that, which is, which is great to see. I think it was funny just that he did that. So, hey, listen, let's talk about the game of the of the year of the worst division of the year. Coming up, Cowboys-Philly. Um, you know, that's, been a, that's not in the rewind, but this week they both put themselves in position for the division. Um, the Cowboys blowing out in their game. Philly life and death as they always are. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens. But what do you think of the Cowboys Philly this week? Well, I think Cowboys win. I think they win pretty easily. I think Philly's played pretty horrible and got pretty lucky uh, to squeak out some of these games. They barely beat Washington, barely beat the Giants, and barely beat. Actually, lost Miami, sorry, and lost to the Seattle and lost New England. New England Seattle is fine, but losing Miami, barely beating the Giants, barely beating the Redskins. Dallas at least has destroyed those teams. Dallas yeah. has been known. When they do feel it, they can put up some absurd numbers. And they put up 44 against the Rams. So I'm going to roll Dallas uh, in this game. And I think Dallas should represent this division. As much as it's a bad division, Dallas at least is a team. Has potential. Yeah, like they could easily win the first round of the playoffs. Now it could be San Francisco they play in the first round of the playoffs, which I think they'd lose that. But, you know, at least it would be an, a good game. Uh, San Francisco going into Dallas would be an unbelievable game. Yeah. Or it's Seattle going into Dallas, which would also be an unbelievable game. Also, it is Dallas. As much as people hate Dallas, and I hate Dallas for a lot of things too, it is Dallas, and it's important that they're in the playoffs with the NFL. The playoff game will be massive, yeah. and um, they do have the most potential possible to make a run. So I think Dallas wins and beats Philly, wins the division, and uh, you know probably at 9-7. Yeah, I have to agree with you that uh, you know, Dallas' losses have been against good defenses uh, because you know still Dak Prescott is still... Uh, Zeke Elliott are still, what, three-year guys? I mean, yeah. they're just still young guys. I mean, everybody's getting on their case. But they have blown out bad defenses. So they are that good when they when they got the opportunity. Philly's defense is struggling. I think they romp over Philly. And then it depends who they play and how bad the defense is that they might have a shot at that first round uh, win as well. So it'll be well, interesting. Well, I tell you what, um, I think you're right. They'll blow up Philly. I mean, Philly's given up a lot of points to bad teams. So they will blow up Philly. Come playoff time, like I said, they're either going to play... Uh, hey, they beat Seahawks last year. Well, so. they're either going to play Seattle or San Francisco. Seattle would be a little bit nerve-wracking for me if Seattle yeah. had to play Dallas. San Francisco, I don't, I don't know for sure. Um, but well, they got to be worried after this week. they got to be worried after this <laughs> week. And honestly, they could. Uh, San Francisco wouldn't beat Seattle either. So honestly, if you're worried, potentially worried about Seattle playing Dallas, you should be worried about San Francisco playing Dallas. And in Dallas... Get the I mean, coin out and, and do that is really what you're looking at. So, anyway, I, I think we both agree on Dallas, and we're going to talk about the actual playoffs here in a moment. But, uh, hey, listen, also, and, and we've been involved in this uh, discussion because the quarterback on our home team, which is Seattle, although we live in Toronto, we did live in Seattle for three years, so that became our NFL team. Lamar Jackson, the most Pro Bowl votes, Pro Bowl votes, um, pretty much setting him up for the MB, MVP um, and I don't think there's any doubt that that's a foregone conclusion. However, Colin Howard, uh, I just don't know what he's getting 
what he's getting paid by Russell Wilson to be his PR director, is in love with Russell Wilson, thinks he's the MVP by far. I just don't get it. But the fans spoke in, in votes, and Lamar is easily the top. Yeah, player. I mean, Russell Wilson was number two, and the fans don't vote on the MVP, so it really doesn't matter yeah. what the fans think. It all has to do with people in the league. So, I mean, uh, Collins, Collinsworth thought it was uh, Russell Wilson as well. Um, you know, Russell Wilson seems more impressive to some people. Obviously, I think it's more about Russell Wilson. I've said this before. I feel like it's just Russell Wilson because he's older. I really feel like people think Lamar's a star in the league. He'll win it eventually. So I think the biggest thing is Russell has been kind of hidden in Seattle, truthfully, respectfully, because we had the Legion of Boom. And then we kind of had a couple years where we didn't have an identity. And now it's kind of his team, although I still think it's not his team. I think it's out of players. But if you want to look at why they're saying this, it's because he's been in the league. He has all these great stats, these great records. He leads the NFL in almost everything since coming into yeah. the league. And he just has never won the MVP because he's in Seattle. So I think the reason why the, the people in the league wants, want Russell Wilson to win is simply because it's almost like he's due. Where they know Lamar's going to be around. He's going to do this next year. He's going to do this year after that. I don't see how they would stop him. His offensive line is going to be still on a rookie deal, by the way. Yeah. It's only second year league. So I just think that's the biggest thing of all. And there's many awards they can give Lamar this year, too. You got to remember, Russell Wilson, you're not really up for any other award besides the MVP. Yeah. Lamar's could be most improved, could be... This could be that. So they can give him three other awards. If you don't think politics like that come into it, they do. And I think that's why it's going to be still a question mark. But I'm telling you right now, Lamar has continued to dominate the league. And I think it'll be interesting to see if Seattle can win against San Francisco. I assume they'll win this week. Because if Russell Wilson goes up with San Francisco again, that might put him over the top against Lamar. Who, well, Lamar, sorry, real quick, has had a weaker division. Yeah, without a doubt, I think that's the case. I think he could win for exactly what you're saying. I'm not a Russell Wilson fan. Um, I believe that he has a big ego. He runs an offense that helps all of his stats. I think that's what he's always done. He has more targets, and this is what I couldn't believe in the conversation uh, that uh, Coward was getting into. He has more targets than any other quarterback in this league. Should score 50 points a game. Does put up 30 a game, but how can't you put up 30 a game? You can throw to your guys anytime you want. He's not going downfield like he should be. He's on the tight end all the time. Carson out of the backfield. Low per- or high percentage passes all the time. We only win. They have the highest, in- actually you told me the stat, the highest number of games within one score of losing. And they actually had two that teams missed field goals in the last second. This is not an MVP. Baltimore is destroying the league. I don't know, care what division they're in. They're destroying that side of it. And I just think that Russell Wilson is a guy who has really built his own stats over the years. He's all, all his throwing stats come from the fourth quarter because they run the ball so often during the game. They're always close. And then he's firing up against soft defense. And, and I, I've never liked the way he quarterbacks. I'd love to see someone else quarterback. I hate the fact that they're going on about the offensive line not being good enough. The reason the offensive line is not good is Wilson doesn't stand in the pocket for half a second and he's on the move. How can you be an offensive lineman when you don't even know where the hell your quarterback is? And that's always been my issue with him. Uh, but anyway, that's it. That is my issue. And I, I don't but think he's anywhere close to the if, MVP. If you look at Lamar, they've played uh, Cincinnati, Miami, New York Jets, and then they've had uh, uh, Cincinnati twice this year, sorry. The New York Jets once, Miami once, and then the other two teams in his division are Cleveland and Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh was was uh, not very good with Big Ben going down pretty beat up. And then you look at um, you also look at uh, uh, Cleveland. Uh, they actually lost their one game to Cleveland. They played Cleveland later on. What people are going to look at is that Russell Wilson's had San Francisco in his division, the LA Rams division, Arizona has upset a couple of teams already, a couple other big games that he has gone out and won. I'm just telling you Let's what be you're clear, looking he at. He hasn't gone out and won. They have an incredible offense. I'm telling you right now, if you put Tom Brady in Seattle, they score 50 points a week without even trying. Because Tom Brady can find these receivers down the line, down uh, down the field. He just can because he's a better quarterback. He reads better. We look at videotape of Russell Wilson. The amount of open receivers he misses because he won't. He, he's too small. And then how many sacks? Why? How can you even take a sack in Seattle? Just throw the freaking ball fifty yards down the field. You got the fastest receivers in the league. It's a joke. He's not even close to the MVP. Anyway, I couldn't believe it. I'm listening to Coward go on and on and on about Russell Wilson. Uh, you know what? Give it to Drew Brees. The guy just broke the touchdown records. His team's the same record or even better than Seattle. Why is Drew Brees not in this discussion? Well, Drew Brees has lost three games this year, and Teddy Bridgewater honestly should get the MVP then because he actually won six of their games, and they only have ten wins. Okay, so you're bugging me on that. All right. You're right, though. I forgot about that. Sorry. 
<laughs> Drew Brees actually has done. I just hey, he's done worse than Teddy Bridgewater. I've just tried to find someone to beat Russell Wilson because I can't stand it. That's where they're going. Anyhow, let's uh, move on to uh, something that's sadly uh, in the news right now is that Rivers has pretty much resigned himself that he's leaving the Chargers. Um, he says his future is uncertain, but no quarterback talks about that in this part of the season unless he really feels he's going somewhere else. Well, thank God, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, well, going... 13 3 last year. Tough this year. They've obviously, been a tough year, no doubt. Yeah, but they need to change. I mean, how many years you can go with the same guy and yeah. not have any results? So, you know, not sad to me. Get out of there. Who cares? Yeah, well, you're you're <laughs> uh, you're a young, unemotional guy. I think that guys like Rivers have led the NFL and and been a great uh, a great ambassador of the game and all those kinds of things. I, I hate to see them go out on bad news, wondering where they should go anywhere. The thing I look at on this kind of situation is these players, when they get to this age, should understand when to retire. He's probably at that point. It'd be fantastic if he retired a Charger. You know, his he can't career. retire because he has nine yeah. kids. He has to keep playing. Well, he may not want to be at home. Yeah. <laughs> he can obviously he afford it. Going. But you there you go. He'll another team and have a chance to be successful. I don't feel sorry for anyone that has honestly gotten in the way of his team succeeding, I believe. He has been worse than Brett Favre. Brett Favre at least won a Super Bowl, but he is the Brett Favre. He throws so many. Yeah. People get on Jameis Winston, guys. Phillip Rivers has ruined a career because he throws the ball so wild all over the yeah. field. I don't feel sorry at all. On my mind, I feel he's hurt this team. He's taking big contracts. I feel like it's 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 completely not well. Ninety nine percent his fault that they haven't been better, honestly. And you got to win a game in the playoffs, so I don't feel sorry at all. And he's made thirty million dollars along the way. Good for you. Get out of there. I don't care. Get on that. Get on the way out. Oh man, God damn. You have no feeling for the old guys. Oh yeah, yeah. poor Philip Rivers. I don't know. You you weren't you poor, weren't, poor. I guess poor you guess, I guess you got to give Eli the opportunity. The fact he's won two Super Bowls, even though he's been at a, least won two Super Bowls. At least he's been a terrible quarterback his whole life, but he did win two. Super you want to feel so bad? That's a guy to feel bad about. A guy who at least won two Super Bowls against Tree like trash like you want to feel bad for somebody <laughs> jesus christ philip rivers oh, who cares? Well, it, got to live in san diego for 15 years oh he's 40 <laughs> years old like retired dude but he has nine kids uh, at home and his wife wants more so like that's why he's playing oh my god well pretty soon he's got his own football team to play jesus at home christ, with so. the way you hate on russell wilson like my god <laughs> but russell wilson should be winning I'm not. I'm not Russell saying. Russell Wilson has I'm never not, missed the playoffs. I'm not history. saying that. I'm not saying that Rivers isn't oh a good God. a good quarterback, uh, or that he's ready to move on. I just feel bad for these old timers that uh, he never won a Super Bowl. He's been a great quarterback over his time. Not been able to get there because of him. Not been able to get there. So uh, anyhow, let's move on here with playoffs. There's something to talk about right now. Lots of still opportunities, although looks like pretty much a lock in most spots. But let's look at the one that's got the best opportunity on the worst teams. We already covered Cowboys and Philly. Um, you know, obviously we're both thinking that the Cowboys are going to take Philly and then win the division there. So putting Philly out is really both of our thoughts, I think, in there. It has to be. I mean, logically. I mean, you never know with the Cowboys, unfortunately. So. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, Philly's been known to do crazy stuff like that. They had Nick Foles right now. I'd say they'd be right Yeah, Dallas, if, they could, if they could bring him in, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm going to roll with Dallas. Yeah, yeah, I think a whole bunch of people in Jacksonville are wishing that Philly still had Nick yeah, Foles, too. Damn, so, uh, so, anyway, we're, we're putting a check mark on the Cowboys. We're putting an X on the Eagles. Uh, they're, you know, that that's what we expect to see over the next couple of days. Okay, so an interesting one that, again, is very difficult. Rams at 8-6 and six still have a chance. I can't believe it. But they still have a shot at it. But they do have to beat the 49ers and then the and Cardinals. I tell you what. And they need the Vikings to lose. It's a strong possibility yeah. the Vikings have to play Green Bay and Chicago. and Chicago. Now they get Green Bay and Chicago both at home. So yeah. it's unlikely they'll lose both because they are 6-0 and at home. And I feel like Green Bay is actually pretty vulnerable. I still think Aaron Rodgers and the offense have not clicked yet. Which is dangerous come playoff time when for one game it could play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really been that defense. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll roll with Minnesota still because of how good they are at home. They get the yeah. dome, uh, the dome advantage. Uh, Chicago right now is, is, is out. So I think. And Chicago's going to have nothing to play for. They're not really motivated. So I think, I think you're right. I think Minnesota's going to win at least against Chicago. Yeah. Which puts them in there. And the Rams still have to beat the 49ers. Yeah, the which, I think the Rams could beat the 49ers and I think it'd be huge for Seattle. Yeah. But with the Rams, again, you have no idea what they might do yeah. this week. They might win. They might lose. They might beat the Rams, lose the Cardinals. Like that, yeah. they're a weird team too. So I'll, I'll roll with Minnesota. Who, by the way, despite the fact I hate Kirk Cousins' contract, yeah. not that I hate him as a person, but his contract's ridiculous. They've actually been pretty solid. Yeah, but there's another guy that I don't want to say I feel for because he's making a fortune. 
Uh, but he played a uh, number of bad years there, and he's really never put up the numbers, never really been what people thought he would be. Obviously got stuck in Washington, which didn't help. Uh, so I'd like to see him be successful this year, and I think he's he, they've had a good season. So I think they're going to roll on. I think it'll be the Vikings all the way there. So you and I are both putting a check mark with the Vikings, and Rams will be out. And so they deserve to be a little bit of a hangover uh, from the Super Bowl, but they've really come on late and shown some – that they got some possibilities there, actually. So maybe well, next year the biggest thing be they back. did was either Todd Gurley was really injured, or they thought they were good enough without him, and they're not. So they uh, tried to rest him. Also, no one could have expected that uh, the 49ers would be this good either. Yeah, yeah. 49ers really changed this whole division because everyone expected the Rams Seahawks to be one too, um, and throwing the 49ers in there and the Seahawks have really been quite huge this year, uh, beating San Francisco once. Beating the Rams once. So it was a tough division. But I tell you what, the Rams are on a downward spiral, which is hard to believe at the Super Bowl. You just signed They've your traded <laughs> all their picks. All their picks. Like, if they don't keep the team they have, if they, like, honestly, if they don't get the team, they, they've traded every single pick. They have butchered this franchise if they can't win with the team they got now. And with Seattle and San Francisco and the Saints and Green Bay and Minnesota and Arizona yeah. has looked decent at times. Yeah. The Rams are in a lot of trouble. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Obviously, and they paid uh, their quarterback a lot of money this year. That was stupid. So, uh, so they're under the gun. Well, I still think happen. golf's not that bad. I think it's 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 a little bit situational. Well, but situational I don't think it's is, worth hundred million dollars. They either. did give the ball to Curly uh, Gurley more often this last couple of weeks, and they and they've been playing well, and he's been playing well. I think another off season of getting him rested. He is obviously the key, and every quarterback needs a great running back. So if he's not going to be that. How do they find another running back to come in? The other running back's spot? not bad. It's amazing what names do, but the other running back stats are decent. They're not as good as Gurley's, but they're decent enough. But I think you need Gurley just for the name alone to draw defenses in. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see. But I think the Rams are in trouble because they've traded away their future. So either they're going to have to trade away the guys who went out and got and get picks back, or they're going to have to roll with this team and see if next year's better. Yeah, they're going to have to see what happens there. But we're calling the Rams out of the playoffs uh, for right now. We, lose, we give 44 points to Dallas here out of the playoffs. Yeah, no kidding, eh? Let's move to the other division. Let's eliminate a couple teams right away. Browns and Raiders is six and eight still have a chance, which is sad to say. Uh, they do, but uh, I think both of us are agreeing that they don't have a chance. Yeah, they don't have a chance because Pittsburgh gets to play the Jets. So. Yeah, Pittsburgh's going to get. And Pittsburgh's up. been good enough. They should beat the Jets. They should shut them down. Yeah. Uh, so I really think Pittsburgh's fine, and then they also get probably Baltimore, who will sit their starters because more than likely Baltimore will be Cleveland this week. If Baltimore does that, they can't be caught for the number one seed. So right. they'll most likely sit their players. Um, so Pittsburgh should get one of those two games. Yeah, I agree 100%. I think those, and they deserve to be out. I'd like to see the Browns win two games because we did pick them to finish 8-8 eight and, eight and miss the playoffs. Yeah. When we did our, our uh, right. NFL camps Tons way back when. Tons of issues with eh? that team. Odell so, Beckham, Jar- Jarvis Landry yeah. were mic'd up and were caught saying, come get me to the Cardinals. So, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, uh, it's a mess. It's there. been a mess, which Cleveland is. It's hard to believe they got into prime time by getting these players and already it's a mess. They were a Super Bowl it's really, favorite. Right? Yeah, just really so bad. So, hey, we're putting a check mark on the Steelers. We were smart. We said Steelers and Ravens make the playoffs. Yeah. We said Cleveland would make the playoffs if you guys listen to us. If we listen to ourselves, we would have made exactly this. When we did exactly when we did our camp, we said exactly. Ravens win division, and we got trashed by it. And then we said Pittsburgh we walk our team. Yeah, so we we did well when we did our camps. Yeah. Okay, listen. Here's here's the one that matters right now. Titans, can they get in? Uh, we love the fact that Tannehill's gone there. We we love the fact that you know this guy's a winner. He was a winner in Miami. He's come to the Titans, turned them right around. I mean. Hard to believe one quarterback going to take over the same team as another quarterback had and get them on this kind of run. But big loss this week. They really need to get this one they this need week. To win this game. And so can they do it? Well, let's take a look at it. We've got New Orleans and Houston for these guys to play. That's a pretty tough end of the schedule. Um, and it's going to be difficult for them to win the two, never mind get the loss uh, that they need on the other side. Yeah, so, I mean, if they can beat the Saints, obviously it'll come down then to the final game of the year, yeah. uh, presumably. Saints going to be a tough game. It is in Tennessee, which isn't bad, but you couldn't beat Houston at home either. And I think Saints are Especially way better team of, than game Houston. Game of the year, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to kick Tennessee out, which would then pretty much keep the playoffs where it's at right now. It's funny how it's the uh, last couple weeks of the season can provide excitement. It'll still be exciting because you never know of a, a big upset. Yeah. You know, teams are playing with their basically their seasons on the line, right? Uh, but I think it's going to be tough for the Titans to win um, both those games. Now, they could lose the Saints and beat uh, Houston, but they'd need the Pittsburgh Steelers with both. Right. So, 
I just don't see it happening uh, either way. It's so hard to imagine that Pittsburgh's going to lose the Jets. You got to go with Pittsburgh game. to make it. You got to go with Tennessee to lose. And you got to put Houston in the divisional title game. Which, by the way, I think Houston should win the division. I think they're the better team overall. Right. And right. get a team that can pull an upset off in the playoffs. Uh, where they will they will play uh, a wild card team. Wild card teams right now um, will be Buffalo or New England yeah. or Pittsburgh. Well, good you mentioned that because we kind of talk about who's going to get in, who's not going to get in. But there are some changes that can happen between wild card and division. So let's go to ours, which is so important to us. Uh, Seattle playing Arizona and the 49ers. So right now the 49ers land in the uh, wild card spot. Seattle's in the lead. Is Seattle going to win both those games? It's going to come down. Week 16, 49ers, uh, Seattle should be an amazing game. Final week of season should decide uh, who wins uh, the division and number one seed, by the way. So it's not just winning the division. It's number one seed versus yeah. wild card spot, which is unbelievable. Uh, really, when you think about that, it could happen in this division. You can either host the entire playoffs or go on the road in the first week and uh, all that stuff. I think it's going to be uh, Seattle, only because I think there's, 49ers have a tough game against the Rams. The Rams yeah. might even beat them. I don't know. but, at but least, we, only, we also only beat Arizona by a lot by less than a, a single score right earlier in the season. No, we beat him pretty handily. Oh, did we? Well, what team was I thinking of then? I thought they Cincinnati. Had... Cincinnati. Oh, the Cincinnati game. Uh, okay, we beat Arizona pretty handily. Arizona's at a point yeah. now where kind of the the surprise is kind of gone now, so it's unlikely they'll shock the Seahawks. Uh, uh, but the 49ers have a tough game against the Rams, then they have to go to Seattle, in Seattle, and play Seattle. Uh, so you got to give the edge of Seattle with a home game and Arizona. Should be better off, um, but who knows? I mean, honestly, well, the home, the so home has not been good. great for Seattle this year. Like it has No, been but passed. honestly, when it comes to a game like this, I'm telling you, you want to be home. You want to be home. But well, we know that that crowd can cause some problems oh, with quarterbacks. Yeah. So. And Grapple uh, yeah. has never played there yet. Yeah. So there's another component that you have to think about. What will his first time be in Seattle? Well, it's going to be a Week 17 game deci- uh, uh, division deciding game, and number one seed, that crowd will be nuts. So how yeah. does he handle it? Um, I think uh, Seahawks will win win the conference, believe it or not. Be number one seed, and uh, everyone have to go through Seattle, which is the formula we use to get to the Super Bowl. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, it'll be interesting, but it's going to be some fun football. Yeah, it should be great this weekend. Now, listen, you did mention the Bills. So, Bills and the uh, and, uh, Patriots, what are you thinking? I want the Bills to win the division. Me I too. Really do. I, I <laughs> predict, you know I love John. I predicted it at the beginning of the season, and he said no. I said they're guaranteed playoff team that might win the division. He I'll said give, no. I'm, I'm going to give it to you. He I mean, no. you're right. I never thought that the Bills, so, they've had to win off a great defense. Their offense is not very good. Um, you know, But defenses win Super Bowls. Uh, lots of teams have proven it uh, over the years that good defenses can win a Super Bowl. Uh, last year's Super Bowl defense is won on both sides, and and uh, New England was able to get the one big score. So you know what? I can't I can't deny Buffalo any longer. Every week they're one of those teams that looks like they're life and death to win, but they've done it and they're here. Yeah, and another division is going to come down the last game, last game of the season they play. So, yeah. Um, you know, Buffalo should win this week. The New England should win this week. We'll come down the last game of the of the regular season, and uh, it should be lots of fun. I really hope Buffalo can pull off the upset. I think it'll be pretty special. Uh, if they did, I think the crowd would be nuts. I think Bills Mafia would be absolutely yeah. insane. Um, and they've only made the playoffs two twice in the last uh, two decades, and it's been the last two or the last, last three years. years. Yeah, so, so so you know they're on a team on the rise. I tell you what, they're see it. they're a lot more positive than New England right now. And yeah, I think, oh for sure. I think also that um, New England, Buffalo can shut down New England, and New England's defense now that did shut down Buffalo the first time they played a little bit more vulnerable than it used to be. And Josh yeah. Allen's a lot more. Comfortable and a lot more uh, experience. He's got stuck in the ball away though. Nobody hasn't. Ex- oh he did against Pittsburgh, but he hadn't a lot. Yeah. He's been playing a lot better. That's just the more positive. I say Buffalo does. I think they get it done. I Looking think. forward to it. And then New England loses, by the way, in the playoffs. First round. Let me see. Let's calculate who they would play. Would they play the Texans the same as the, Bull- the no, Bills no, no, are no, no, projected The now? Bills, if they won the division, yeah, New England would be a wild card it. team. They would play the Texans. They yes. would. Yeah, it's interesting. Houston Texas, already beat them by yeah, easily. Say, yeah, t- Texas easily. could be really tough. So uh, you might be right that that, uh, that could really turn Houston. the whole uh, season on end. So I'm we'll telling see what you, happens. I'm telling you, Bills win the division. New England goes into Houston. They lose. I, I, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a big circle there. I didn't believe it, but you're right. That's uh, you did pick it right from the very beginning. So and then the other one we have is Green Bay and the Vikings. Uh, who are who are you thinking there? I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go with Minnesota. I think Minnesota's going to win both games. I really do. I think Minnesota right now, 
Green Bay, uh, they have an easier uh, second game. Unfortunately, they get to play Detroit. Now, I think, I don't know if Minnesota would have to win both and uh, uh, or not. Well, they have to win both, but yeah. I don't know if, if Green Bay had to lose both. I think uh, Minnesota would win the tie break. Not 100% sure on that, but I think they would. I say Minnesota. I think Minnesota wins both their games. So, uh, assuming they win both their games, Green Bay loses to Minnesota, beats Detroit. I think right now it's going to be tough for Green Bay to go into Minnesota. I think that place is going to be rocking. I think Minnesota is more of a complete team now. Their running back didn't play. Dalvin Cook didn't play the last half of the game there, and I'm a little worried about that because I think he's their secret weapon. Well, not secret anymore, but he is their yeah. weapon. I have choice. It's going to be lots of fun. I just I just think um, I think uh, Aaron Rodgers is still has some missing links on that offense, and I think Aaron Jones is great. I think Devontae Adams is great. I think Minnesota can put up more. I think they can do better, and I think in Minnesota is very difficult – Four teams right now. Minnesota's six and zero at home, so yeah, they're loving they, and, they, they and they've got a great defense. I mean, they've had times where they may not played like it, but they do have one. They could easily shut down Green Bay. I would think this week coming up. Uh, so well, I'm, I'm in agreement. Real with quick, you. the game they lost earlier to Green Bay was stupidity. So yeah. if they can clean that up, and that's the one thing about Minnesota, every big game they're stupid. So if they can clean it up even a little bit, I think they beat Green Bay, and I think they will clean it up. I think. Kirk Cousins might have his breaking out party against Green Bay. Yeah, I would love to see it. I'd uh, love to see Minnesota in there. Um, you know, it's a, it's a team that has great fans. They put, they're one of those teams that puts up with some horrible weather to, to be football fans. And so always give credit to those guys when they're out there cheering their team on. Love to see that happen. So there we go. That's kind of a whole bunch of discussions. It'll be more fortified after this week. Should Super Bowl predictions? We've gone through all this? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. You, you might be able to take me back on. Oh, wait a minute. I picked Seattle, if I remember did correctly. Pick Seattle. So I've got my Seattle in there. Sticking with it after your criticism of Russell Wilson. Well, they're still winning. I just don't like him as an MVP. I just don't okay, like the way he goes. So, so, but who else did I have? I even forget now. Oh, I can't. Even. Kansas City, right? <laughs> well, you had the Chargers, didn't you? I had the Bears. Was the Bears that could have played Seattle? I'm trying to think back. No, 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 no. Who could have met Seattle? No, in the Super Bowl. Yeah. No, no, you had the Chiefs, I think. Was the Chiefs? Yeah, I have to go back and read that up. My apologies, I forget. I was high on Chicago at the start of the year. As I no, I think you had the Chiefs. I think you had the Chiefs. Um, uh, Chiefs in Seattle because you had two young guys. I went with actually New England, and New Orleans. Yeah, but I'm updating my. Oh, actually, oh, yeah. You know what? I think I might go in New England too. I got to go back and check that. Um, I wasn't as confident as we went through the season, but anyway, there we are. Um, I'll have to check that one. I say myself. first of all, more importantly, I think the game, the game of the century will be uh, in the in the AFC. It's going to be Buffalo and Baltimore in the conference finals. I think it's going to be all great, right, so, uh, but it's going to be... I know you're on golf today, but are you guys smoking on the courts or something? Buffalo and the Bal- Super Bowl? No, 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 no. Ball- Buffalo and Baltimore in the conference oh, final. Oh, conference final. Okay, uh, yeah, I was going to uh, say, okay, that didn't light up. Baltimore is going to Super Bowl. Now, let me tell you the Super Bowl everyone wants, I think, which is what? Seattle, well, Seattle and Baltimore. Baltimore. No, Seattle and Baltimore. No. Lamar versus Russell no. Wilson. You don't think people want to see no, that? they want to see that. The MVP guys, they want to see that. They so, want to see if Seattle can come back in the game, the Super Bowl they gave away. Could they get it back against Tom Brady? I'm sure that's what people would love to see more than anything else. Um, I, Do you know I, what they would love to see, though? Green Bay, Seattle, in Seattle, conference finals in the NFC, because last time Seattle went to the Super Bowl, they got the onside kick, they got the overtime. It was the game, maybe, yeah. of the decade. So you want Seattle, Green Bay, you probably want Baltimore, New England, now that you've updated me on the new one, I forgot yeah. about that. I hope the Bills get there. But more likely, let's say more likely, you could very well have Seattle, New England, Baltimore, uh, Seattle, uh, Green Bay, Baltimore, New England, yeah. and then New England, Seattle, and the uh, Super Bowl. That would be pretty special for sure. But I think anything right now with Seattle, Baltimore, Seattle, New England would be very cool. I know people would like to see New Orleans versus New England, two yeah. old guys. But something along those lines, I know people uh, talk about, uh, which would be pretty special. I've never thought of it as de- in depth. With Kansas City play Baltimore, Mahomes versus Lamar. I mean, there's so many great matchups that can yeah. happen in the NFL right now, which is why the NFL is in such a great spot. That's why they sold out the Super Bowl for the fastest in 27 years. Because look at all these teams, look at all the potential. And by the way, I didn't know this. Parents, San Francisco is quite the fan base, apparently. So there are if you huge... guys if you guys to live in San Francisco, you should be happy about everything. So, but no, for real, they're a huge want to yeah. be go oh, far in the playoffs because sure. of the history of oh, Montana uh, and Steve uh, Young and all that. They were they were juggernauts in their day, and they haven't been there in a long, long so, time. Lots of fun. But here's what here's what I want to wait for. It's a little bit premature. I want to wait for the playoffs to finalize. Why do I want to wait? Is because a team since uh, 
quarterback that I love to That's hate, Eli point. Manning, yeah. uh, no one has gone from the wild card game to win the Super Bowl. So you look at 49ers, you look at Seattle, you look at Green Bay, you look at Minnesota. You know what? Depending on who's in that wild card game, you got to throw them out just sure. on the odds alone. True. Right? So uh, that's why I want to wait because even Seattle, if they don't finish first in their division and they're a wild card team, I got to throw them out because nobody know. gets there. I know. And it's been proven for I don't know what it I'm is. I'm telling you, I think those Eli would be it, so. some unbelievable rematches I agree. of great games in the past. Baltimore being the only new team out there, uh, really, although they had a great game uh, when Joe Flower was quarterback, Baltimore versus New England. So yeah. there's a lot of cool f- uh, f- or re- rematches, so to speak. Well, here's what I'd love to see. Here's what I'd love to see. Either two veterans who are kind of at the end of the two career or two young guys. I, I don't want a veteran against a young guy. Your all-time Super Bowl so, you just said was New England versus Seattle. I know. Well, that's two veteran quarterbacks. Russell Wilson's been long, around a long time yeah, now. Yeah. He's not a young guy. But that one isn't about the quarterbacks. That one's about the pass. Right. That's about the pass. Because Seattle should have won their second, the might have gone on and won three and four if they'd gotten that one. It was a, it's was. it been a long time where that's still brought up to this date about that. So that one, number, I, that one I'm okay that they're not both 40. If you look at any list, it's, it's, it's the, the number one. one Super Bowl moment yeah. in NFL history. Yeah. So to have them back would be something special. And I would hope it would go like this. Tom Brady on the one yard line throws an interception. interception. <laughs> <laughs> or let me, let or me the Seahawks on the one yard line and they run they, the ball. And they run the ball and win. So there you go. Uh, great NFL. The NFL the next couple of weeks is going to be awesome to watch. A lot of potentials in and out. We didn't see so many potentials in and out of the playoffs, but certainly in and out of wild card or divisions. And then we'll finalize our uh, Super Bowl picks once we get past that. Uh, you know where we know where everybody's going to finish. So anyway, we'll look forward to next week. It's always a great week in the NFL. That was.